We'll make our way to the top, we'll never break, never stop And when we get to the spot, we'll know we made it there together We'll remember forever That life is but a dream Isn't it amazing? Afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our uh, info session with our Career College VICCC, and that is Vancouver International College Career Campus. And I have uh, two beautiful ladies uh, with me today here. Uh, our college director, um, Melissa, and our academic manager, Catherine, is here with us today. Hello, ladies. How are you today? Hi, Elias. Hi, Catherine. Doing well. um, thanks for joining me today, first of all. Uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, VICCC, uh, our programs, uh, updates from our uh, VIC Career College, um, uh, latest developments, and uh, what we have been doing uh, since we reopened our campuses uh, back in July. Uh, we're going to talk about our co-op programs, uh, our requirements and all that. So uh, before we go into uh, the details, can we get to uh, uh, know you first? <laughs> sure. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us at our career campus today um, in Vancouver. Uh, it's, I think, a little bit sunny out today. Uh, and I rode the SkyTrain into work today. Uh, everyone was wearing masks and keeping social distance and and it felt safe and friendly and comfortable. Great. <laughs> and Catherine? Yeah, it's a beautiful day. I can see the sun coming in the window here. Um, we're just getting ready uh, for, we're preparing for a new intake uh, next month and we're pretty excited to welcome some new students on campus. Great. All right, uh, before we talk about our programs, I just want to talk about um, the updates uh, with our VICCC campus. Uh, we've, we have a brand new campus now uh, here at Seymour. So uh, Melissa, can you give us uh, uh, a bit more updates about this? Sure. So this yeah. Sure, so VIC, uh, for those that don't know, VIC has been around um, for over 20 years. Uh, originally, we were an ESL language college, and um, in the last 10 years, uh, we've, uh, 
merged with some other schools and developed new programs. And now we are exclusively a career college. Mm -hmm. um, we're sister schools with Sprott Shaw College, who also offer career training programs, mm -hmm. and with Sprott Shaw Language College, who do the ESL. Um, in our family, we also have GEC student housing. So I feel like we're part of a, a complete package for students who want to come to Canada, experience living in Canada, mm -hmm. study and improve their English, um, and work towards building their career. Um, I think later on, Catherine's going to talk a little bit about our co-op program and the mm -hmm. different work opportunities that are still happening in Canada, regardless of what's going on with COVID. Okay, that's great. Uh, can we talk about uh, our programs right now here at PIC? and um, what we have done for our students since we reopened back in July um, mm -hmm. and um, in what format we are teaching our students right now. Can you give us uh, uh, a bit of this? For Thank sure. Um, so when COVID first, first hit in, in March, um, we didn't, we didn't close down programs at all. Um, we immediately went online with our, our programs. Mm -hmm. um, and all our teachers that teach at VIC are really experienced long-term teachers. Um, they really enjoy teaching face-to-face, -face, but they were able to transition online really seamlessly. I'm really proud of, of the team that we have here. And, we got really great feedback from all of our students um, at how seamless it was moving online. Um, so uh, until I think June or Ju July was when we were able to return, July was when we were able to return to campus from teaching online. Um, and since then, some of our programs have been offered um, online, some of them have been in class and some of them have been taught hybrid, so a combination of both. Um, at the moment, we have our advanced global business expertise program, uh, mm -hmm. and that program is being taught on campus, mm -hmm. uh, but we are able to also offer hybrid for a select number of the modules. Mm -hmm. um, and the same applies to our customer service program, uh, customer service professional. Um, that program is being taught on campus and we will be offering it hybrid starting next month for several modules as well. Um, we have a great TESOL teacher training program and at the moment that one uh, is going to be offered on campus. Um, if, if demand requires, um, we would be happy to also run classes online for TESOL. Mm -hmm. And our interpreting and translation program for Korean students uh, is being taught on campus next month as well. Um, and that one has worked well both on campus and hybrid. Um, so really, we have solutions for students who, who want to be on campus and feel safe. Um, we follow all the WorkSafe BC guidelines mm -hmm. and have COVID safety measures in place, like wearing a mask, social distancing. Um, students and staff both have to check in every morning, um, mm -hmm. and students do a, a temperature check when they arrive. So the campus, um, I feel really proud and confident um, coming to our campus uh, about how safe it is. Right now I'm talking to you alone in my office, so I don't have a mask on, but any other time I always have a mask on. Mm -hmm. um, and for students who are overseas and want to join us and not able to travel yet, um, it's a great option to begin your studies online and then come to Canada when you can. Um, or, or just complete your studies online. Uh, that's, I guess, the silver lining of COVID is that it has allowed us to uh, explore with technology and open some new doors. Okay. And uh, I just want to ask, because I, we get a lot of questions uh, from students and our partners all around the world, if they're able to uh, travel to Canada and study uh, at VICCC. Yes, um, so right now students 
are able to come to Canada, um, they have to have a COVID test first. Mm -hmm. um, and they have to do two weeks self isolation beforehand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, BIC, we have a great student support services team um, and students are fully guided through this whole process and supported. Um, we have strict guidelines that we follow for the government here mm -hmm. um, in terms of monitoring and making sure everyone is safe. Mm -hmm. um, and as well now, we keep hearing news about uh, the vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it's starting with the highest needs people um, being vaccinated first, mm -hmm. but uh, they're rolling it out. Uh, it's becoming, uh, it's coming to us free, so you won't have to pay for it in BC. And um, I think I wrote down today, there's another update today from the government um, about uh, COVID and the vaccine, but right now, um, BC's cases of COVID-19 are declining. Great. So in short, if students want to study in Canada on campus, mm -hmm. uh, they can do so uh, with mm -hmm. us at VICCP. Uh, all they have to do is uh, apply to our school, uh, apply for their visas, uh, and then all they need is uh, they need a PCR, COVID-19 test, yes. uh, 72 hours prior uh, uh, to their flights. And then uh, we'll take care of the rest. We'll arrange their home stays, uh, their quarantine uh, period. And uh, they, if they want, they can stay at our GEC residences, which is a walking distance to our BICCC and SSLC campuses. Only like Beautiful. 10 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, have, sorry. <laughs> we also have a great uh, accommodation coordinator who talks with our students that are in quarantine every single day. Mm -hmm. um, sends you new activities that you can do from your quarantine site. Um, we want to make sure that when you're self-isolating, you don't feel totally isolated as much mm -hmm. as much as possible. We want you to feel um, like you're already part of our, our school. Yeah, and uh, I, I wanted to mention this as well. Uh, students can travel to only uh, to study in Canada, uh, but if their schools are listed, on the new DLI list with a COVID-19 preparedness plan, you know. Uh, so can you just briefly touch base on that as well? So our COVID-19 safety plan? Hmm. Uh, uh, like how, uh, just the DLI thing. Uh, like okay. We are, we are approved, yeah. we are on that approved list. Yeah, and we are a designated yeah. learning institution, a DLI. Mm -hmm. um, that means that, um, we were a DLI even, even before COVID hit. And since COVID happened, um, we have new safety measures that we have to follow. Um, we were one of the first schools that um, were granted DLI again with mm -hmm. our COVID safety plan. Mm -hmm. um, it's posted on our website. So if you are a, a student considering coming to Canada or a parent considering sending your child to Canada, you can read and see exactly uh, what procedures we follow uh, to ensure our students and staff are safe. Great. So if students want to come to Canada, study, uh, study and work, uh, they can do so with VICCP. Yeah, you have you have to attend a designated learning institute. Exactly. If you're not a DLI, it's, it's and not we got this back in early December, I believe. Can you tell us about uh, our programs, what we teach at VICCC, what uh, programs we offer uh, to our students, and uh, um, how can they benefit from these programs? What can they do with it? Uh, can you please guide us through our programs? Sure. Um, so both of us are referring to our school as VIC and VICCC, so maybe I'll, I'll start with that. Um, VIC, Vancouver International College, was originally an ESL language school, um, and it has been around for over 20 years. Um, and uh, now we are a full career uh, training pro, uh, campus. Um, so the CC is added on for our career campus. Mm -hmm. um, we offer career training programs such as advanced global business expertise, mm -hmm. um, which is a co-op program. Uh, 
advanced customer service professional, another co-op program, um, and then different variations of that program where you can either just study or study and do a practicum, um, different lengths. So we have both short program option, options and long-term program options um, for those programs. We also offer several different teacher training programs, um, TESOL tra teacher training. We have TESOL Advanced Online, um, which if you complete that and you have a university degree, you get your TESOL Canada certification. You can apply mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. um, we have several shorter TESOL modules uh, and we have an interpretation and translation for Korean students. Mm -hmm. Great, uh, so many program options uh, for our students. Um, so what do our students learn in these programs? How, um, um, what can they do with this? How, how do we help them achieve their goals? Hmm. Um, so the goal of any of our, our programs is providing our students with employable skills. So um, whether they want a career um, in business or in marketing, mm -hmm. or whether they just want work experience in Canada, um, maybe working as a barista or at, at a hotel, um, whatever your employable skill goals are, um, we have a program that will help you achieve that. We also have a really great uh, student services team who will um, meet with students and advise students, um, kind of explore what programs we have and what will be the best fit for you. Um, and we have a great co-op coordinator. So if you do want work experience in Canada, um, the co-op coordinator is there to help you step-by-step step from interview prep, um, job placement, job searching, job placement, um, different uh, reviews throughout the process and uh, following up to make sure that you're totally satisfied with, with your experience. So uh, this is what I wanted to ask you. Uh, when, can they, when can students join our uh, school, our programs? Uh, so what are our intake uh, times? So is it like every month, every four weeks or uh, every three months? Uh, I wanted to ask you that. And what are the entrance requirements uh, to our programs? Uh, do you want, do you want to reply, to Catherine? Sure, you question. go for it. Sure. <laughs> so we do student intake every four weeks, which is usually about once a month, okay. depending on where the dates fall. So mm -hmm. students can start um, every four weeks. That's the answer to that question. Mm -hmm. uh, the entrance requirements for, I'll just talk about AGBE and CSP for now. Okay. Um, so they need to reach a certain level. We have uh, an, entrance ex an entrance test that students take to see if they meet that level. Mm -hmm. And also they do an interview either with me or one of our other staff um, to test their English language speaking skills specifically. So for AGBE, you would think about an IELTS level six and for ACSP an IELTS level 4.5, but students don't need to have an IELTS test to enter the course. As I said, we have our own entrance uh, test that students can take. Great, so uh, if they're not sure what their levels are, they can always uh, reach out to us. We can send them an uh, online test and then arrange an interview and, uh, and then we can tell them if they're a good fit uh, for our program. So not yeah. but other than that, other than the English requirements, do we ask for their transcripts or do we require anything else? If they have done a, a, a TOEIC or TOEFL or IELTS test previously, we can take those scores and, and use them, mm -hmm. um, provided they're within a certain period, time period. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, we don't need any transcripts um, from other university courses or high school, anything like that. We just, uh, they just need to complete their high school. Yeah. Basically, pretty much. Okay, great. Um, so we have intakes every four weeks, so that's very flexible. Uh, you know, they can come and start uh, any month. Uh, so that's really great for our students. Uh, okay, so we, we talked about the admission requirements and our start dates. 
so I want to talk about the co-op portion uh, with you, Catherine. Okay, uh, so. What is co-op? I get this question a lot. What is co-op or, or uh, work in study? Yeah, so what is co-op? Mm -hmm. So when students come, they start and they either do a six month in-class academic portion for AGBE, or they do a seven month in-class portion for ACSP. Mm -hmm. So that's the getting all the foundations and, and skills that they'll need. Mm -hmm. Once they finish their in-class portion, they then move on to the co-op. Co-op is a work experience or work term. So students will take all of the skills and all of the knowledge that they've practiced and learned in in class and then go out into their work placement and, and use those skills and practice those skills. And um, do we arrange this co-op job for our students or are they on their own? They're not on their own. Okay. As, as we mentioned earlier, students mm -hmm. um, are met with, they meet with the co-op coordinator mm -hmm. and they meet with that co-op coordinator before they start the work term. So when they first start, usually in their first week mm -hmm. with the co-op coordinator and co-op coordinator will guide them through all of the things they need to know before they get started. So nothing's a surprise. Um, so a few times in their in-class studies, um, they'll meet with the co-op coordinator. Mm -hmm. And then when they're ready uh, to start the co-op portion, of course, students need to maintain a certain um, score, average score uh, during their academic term at 70%. Um, they'll, they'll be able to enter the co-op term and we will arrange or help them arrange interviews. We have a third party um, company that we work with that helps mm -hmm. students set up interviews. So mm -hmm. they're not finding interviews on their own. Mm -hmm. they're, they're being arranged with them, for them. Some students find their own jobs. They have to be approved, but um, the co coordinator really helps the students to find the placements. I, I also get this question a lot uh, because they uh, students hear this from uh, perhaps other schools if the co-op job is guaranteed or not. I, I hear this term a lot, but uh, is this a guaranteed job placement uh, or what is, what is it? So co-op term, we will help with the interviews. We mm -hmm. help a lot, as Melissa said, with um, interview practice and resume writing. Mm -hmm. However, when the student goes to the interview, mm -hmm. that's their chance to shine and and we can't guarantee a placement, but we can set up the student to be very well prepared for the interview and to get a job. So we guarantee the interview for them. Mm -hmm. And how many interviews? Three interviews. Three interviews, okay. Yeah, sometimes. So, so students um, uh, study at uh, our programs, either at AGB or ACSB from the start, they sit down with our co-op coordinator uh, they have an orientation in their first week. They work on their resumes. Uh, you know, they gather all the required documents. And uh, even uh, in our modules uh, in the course, they, they learn about interview skills, mm -hmm. right? Resume building and all that. So they will be fully prepared. Yes. Uh, I also get this question as well. So they, they can work part-time during their studies, uh, either uh, during the first six or seven months, depending on their programs. Mm -hmm. We also help them find a part-time job uh, in the beginning. Yeah, a lot of students work part-time because of course they will have a study permit mm -hmm. um, along with their work permit. Mm -hmm. So they can work up to 20 hours per week um, while they're in class. And because of the schedule, a lot of students can work easily starting in the afternoons. Okay, so uh, in AGB, Global Business Expertise, first six months, they study and they can work part-time for 20 hours. And uh, the second half of the program, they get to work full-time. Yes. And same thing with uh, customer service professional, first seven months, they study and then work part-time. And then second half, they work full-time. Uh, so we, we say they work full time in the second half, but uh, what or how many months is this 
uh, six months uh, of full-time work and seven months of full-time work, or is there specific hours for this? So the hours are, are defined. So for AGBE, students can work between 400 and 636 hours. So there's a bit of a range. Mm -hmm. For ACSP, they need to work 560 hours. Okay. Um, but as far as I know, um, they can they can work full time, yes, swap job, but they can um, get their twenty hours towards their co op and the rest from their study permit, so they can stretch their yeah, right. They can stretch their time to full six or seven months, but they cannot yeah, go yeah. beyond uh, six or seven months. Yeah, the study portion and the academic portion in class portion need to be the same. Or the study portion can't be shorter than the, that's what I wanna say. Study portion can't be shorter than the work term. Okay, great. Um, so you touched base on uh, finding a placement uh, for our students. How does this really work? Uh, can you talk about quickly about this uh, procedure? Yeah, briefly, I'll say we work with our um, partner, Experience Education, and they will set up interviews for the students, mm -hmm. we'll say three. Mm -hmm. So what that means is they have a bank of different job placements that have been vetted and reviewed and checked so that they're safe for the student to, as a safe place for the student to work. Mm -hmm. So they'll draw from that based on what the student is interested or what the student wants to focus on mm -hmm. um, during their work experience term. Mm -hmm. And so they'll set up the interviews, student goes to the interview, they get some result back, either yes or no, the student mm -hmm. can accept the job or maybe um, decide to try one more time. Okay. And uh, uh employers report to us or to EE and uh, we monitor our students progress uh, in their uh, job placements right yes when they go to the job placement it's mm -hmm. not like they're alone <laughs> okay. uh, they the co-op coordinator checks in with them regularly as well as our um, placement partner and make sure that they're they're getting the experience that they they need to get mm -hmm. and also they're reporting their hours and making reports back to the school as well. It's, it's part of their, their mm -hmm. long term. And uh, this is one of the most common questions uh, regarding co-op. What, okay, uh, students um, connect with us and okay, great. I can work and study. I can study and work in Canada at VIC, uh, but what kind of jobs? Uh, I'm able to find in Canada, especially in Vancouver, here in Vancouver. Uh, where can I work? What kind of job placements uh, uh, there are available outside? So uh, either Melissa or Kathy, you can both answer to this question. From your experience, uh, uh, I know that it's, it's huge. The list is huge. Yeah. But uh, what kind of sectors uh, do our students usually work in? Uh, I can give a few. I, we've had students working in schools and music schools. We've had students working um, in social media for tech companies or for um, social media promoting for restaurants. Mm -hmm. We've had students working in hotels and restaurants, um, shipping companies. The list is very long. <laughs> um, I think it's such a variety um, and we, we, along with the EE ed experience education, really try to customize for each student. Um, one other thing I, I wanted to mention, we were talking about how all students get um, three interview opportunities uh, arranged through EE. Mm -hmm. And um, usually when students are approaching their first interview, they come to the co-op coordinator and they express they're really anxious about it, you mm -hmm. know, doing an interview in English. Um, and often now uh, with COVID, the first interview is done over the phone or online through a platform like Zoom. Um, and students are uncomfortable maybe speaking in English through those 
technologies, um, but the co-op coordinator supports the student. And out of all of our students that do the go through the three interview process, the majority of them usually have a job after their first interview. Um, we have the three interview process in place in, in case something doesn't work out, um, but the majority of our students are, are satisfied with their, their first interview um, and, and job placement. Um, I, I haven't uh, experienced this, but what, what if they happen to fail all three interviews, let's say? Uh, do, do we give them another chance or uh, what course of action do we take? In these uh, I haven't experienced yeah, I haven't experienced that either, actually. Um, I think the the only time that this would happen, there would have to be some kind of extreme situation. Mm -hmm. So um, if, if the student had a personal issue or um, something related to COVID and, and the workplace had to terminate the employment for, for health and safety reasons, um, some, something extreme. So of course, um, at VAC, our policy is to, to handle things case by case. Um, we have really clear policies to ensure that students are treated safely and fairly. Um, those are all posted on, on our website, but our, our goal here is really um, to be student-centered and make sure that students feel supported from the, the moment they apply to our school all the way through to graduation and even beyond. Great. Um, okay, so students come here, study with us, and they complete their co-op, and they're done. They get their diploma from us, and then what do they do? What can they do if they want to uh, stay uh, in Canada uh, and uh, continue living here and working here? What, what kind of options do they have after the ICCC programs? Never said. What do you, what, I don't, I'm not sure what you're looking for, Elias. <laughs> uh, Spratcha and CP. Uh, okay. <laughs> do you want to ask me again? <laughs> you can edit it. <laughs> so, um, so our students come here, study with us at the ICCC. Uh, they do their co-ops uh, and they complete everything and they get a diploma from us. And then what can they do with our diploma here? Uh, and they, they decided to uh, continue uh, living in Vancouver and working here. Uh, what can they do after VIC? So after VIC, um, it, it depends a little bit on the program that you've completed, mm -hmm. but in general, um, we have a great option that we're sister schools with one of BC's longest standing colleges, Sprott Shaw mm -hmm. College. They've mm -hmm. been um, in the industry since 1903 uh, and they have a huge number of programs. So if they wanna continue their studies, um, they, students can seamlessly move from our school to, to Sprott Shaw College, mm -hmm. as well as um, we are partners now with City University. Um, they are originally from Seattle, USA, and they have a campus now in downtown Vancouver. And so we have some great uh, opportunities for students to uh, continue their studies there post-secondary. Um, for our TESOL advanced online program, again, um, I think I mentioned earlier, the students, if they have a university degree um, mm -hmm. and they complete our TESOL advanced program online, then they can apply for TESOL Canada accreditation, which is required to teach English in Canada. Great. So uh, once they complete uh, our co-op programs, uh, they can either go to our Spratshaw College, uh, continue studying, or they can go to City University, our pathway partner, uh, and then uh, get a bachelor's degree uh, from City University, Bachelor of Arts in Management. Um, they can transfer their uh, VICCC credits to CTU. Uh, I believe they transfer up to 70 credits uh, for both AGB and ACSB. Mm -hmm. um, and then they'll just uh, have to complete a few more courses. 
and uh, get their bachelor's degree from uh, Canada, and then apply for post-graduation work permit and uh, uh, get get uh, a work permit up to three years and start working in Canada. And after that, if they want to immigrate, uh, they have options there. Right. So it, it's designed to be a time efficient and, and seamless process. Um, so start at VIC and um, build your career skills and get your foot in the door to studying in Canada and then move up to either Sprotshaw College or City University and continue your higher education there. Uh, so Melissa, why should students choose VIC over other uh, career colleges? This is probably my favorite question. Um, it gives me the opportunity to brag a little bit um, about some, something that I'm so proud of. Um, at VIC, we have long-term instructors who have been teaching their programs um, for many years. Uh, they've upgraded their skills over time, so they, they stay on top of their game, but um, they've taught the program so long that they know it inside and out. All of our instructors are really personable and really care about each individual student. Um, when you come to VIC, we really want you to feel like you're, you're joining a part of a family or a team. And we want you to feel comfortable, um, whether that's with the COVID safety procedures or whether it's with your instructor and being able to communicate on how you're feeling about your program mm -hmm. um, and, and where you're at in terms of reaching your goals. Um, or if it's talking to our um, advisors about uh, what you want to do around the city um, or reaching your post-secondary goals um, and beyond. So we just, are, I think a student should choose VIC because we really care um, and, and we want our students to feel that they are cared for. And uh, they can also take advantage of our um, uh, promotional prices. Uh, yes. It's very affordable uh, for them, uh, and obviously they get to study and work at the same time. So uh, they would, you know, offset um, most of their uh, expenses here in Vancouver. So it's it's very uh, affordable, and um, and they can take uh, an advantage uh, of this. Uh, they can, you know, they can cover their uh, tuition fees plus uh, their living expenses uh, by. Uh, of working part-time during their studies and full-time during their co-op. Uh, so that's uh, also another advantage. Right. Um, and I think one other thing that we really wanted to mention is that um, all of our program information um, and information about our, our school is on our website, vancouver.college. Mm -hmm. And um, all, all of our uh, application information is online. You can either fill the, out our application form online or you can send an email to info at viccc.ca um, or if you're local in Vancouver and you want to come in and talk to one of our advisors or even myself or Catherine, um, you can call the school or email the school and set up an appointment to do so that we would just love to see you here. Great. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Elias. Thank you, Catherine. Hello, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us in this GBE demo session. Uh, we really appreciate you uh, listening and or watching this demo session. Uh, and of course, one day we would like to see you in class. Um, again, uh, feel free to ask for more uh, information to contact our marketers. But for the time being, we are really happy that you are willing to make 
the effort. Take the time to uh, attend this demo session. Uh, my name is Luke and I am the instructor and coordinator of Global Business Expertise, the program at Vancouver International College Career Campus. And today I would just like to talk about something, um, let's say a little scary. Uh, yes, I know when you uh, decide to come to Canada and choose a particular uh, business program, I know this can be a very intimidating and difficult decision. Uh, and we appreciate that. After all, you are spending, uh, you are planning to spend quite a bit of money. Uh, you are planning to invest quite a bit of time um, to come and uh, join us. So you want to make sure that you're making the right uh, decision. And again, we really uh, appreciate that. And we would like to help you. We are here uh, to help you. Now, when you look at uh, the business program, of course, uh, we know there are tons of business programs around, and it can often be very hard to figure out which one is the right one for me. What specific business program should I choose, uh, and how can this specific business program help me in the future? Uh, how will it help my career? How will it help my personal and professional uh, development? So uh, the one thing I would like to focus on uh, today, and again, uh, it's, it's a little scary, is accounting. Yes, accounting. Uh, many students uh, come to us and feel that accounting is like the Mount Everest of uh, the business program. Uh, this is something that they will not enjoy. They are not looking forward to. And as much as possible, they would like to avoid it. Uh, however, um, one of my first tasks always in the program is, of course, to help students, to help people, and to make them feel at home and at ease. So when you finish uh, the program, or when you uh, return home, uh, not only do you feel that you have developed, uh, professionally, but also you have learned something personally. Yeah. And uh, that's what I would like to briefly explain um, today. So accounting. Accounting is one of the uh, six courses in the business program. We have uh, management, we have business communication, we have law, then there's uh, marketing and there's uh, economics. Um, the two courses, of course, that, uh, again, tend to scare people are law and accounting. Now, first of all, I would like to say when we include uh, a course in the program, it's all part of one overriding or one very, very broad goal. And that is to help you become a more accomplished, a more competent and a more confident business professional. Yeah, that is the ultimate goal of any particular course in the program. That's always the the one, uh, the first and the last priority in the business program to help you become a better, more qualified, more competent, more comfortable professional. Um, and each particular course, each one of the six courses 
has a very specific function in that overall program. You know, um, the basic course, as we see it, is of course the management course and the ultimate goal um, and how we love to help you is to become a better manager. Uh, and what should a better manager be able to do? A better manager should be able to maximize performance. Yeah. To produce the best possible results for whatever organization you work for. Yeah. So how does accounting fit in that picture? Yeah. Once again, accounting is something that many people think about as uh, scary, as something horrible, something they will not like, something that will uh, probably give them a huge headache, something that we may well make them sick. Yeah. No, of course, we know that is not uh, the case. Why do we do accounting? Um, and here, again, a scary story, but let me put you at ease. Uh, this is the purpose of this short talk, uh, is to help you overcome whatever doubts or fears or suspicions you have and help you actually dive, jump into accounting with, uh, with pleasure, with joy, right? That's the purpose. That's the purpose. That's the goal. Um, become a joy, not become a joyful accountant, but become um, comfortable. Uh, maybe be a little happier doing accounting. Yeah. So um, again, the first priority in the business program is to help you become better managers or be more confident and more competent in working with management. Accounting is a big part of that. Why is that so? Why do we have to do accounting? Why on earth should we spend so much time doing accounting? Well, uh, let's be honest. If you're going to be a better manager, if you want to become a better manager, um, you will be at some point evaluated. People will look at you and ask for results. Your investors will ask about your performance. Your employees will ask um, about your performance. And definitely senior management, the people above you, will ask about your performance. Your competitors, your suppliers, Everyone will want to know about your performance. How are you doing? Yeah. And this is where accounting comes in. Yeah. Business is about the numbers. You can have fabulous ideas. You can, have, you can be wonderfully creative. Yeah. You can have a tremendous brainwave and wake up in the morning and tell yourself, this is fantastic. But if the numbers don't work out, you will disappear. Your idea will disappear. Your company, your organization will disappear. So even if we're not really comfortable with numbers, even if we have very bad memories of numbers in elementary school or in junior high or in senior high, even if we are allergic to numbers, at some point we have to face the fact, all right, here I am, um, I really would like to work in business or I would like to help my organization um, perform better at some point, we will have to face the numbers. And believe me, the numbers are not that scary. The numbers are not that scary at all. So 
let me just give you a brief idea of how we make people feel more at home and at ease. Uh, at home in accounting, at ease with accounting. Yeah, uh, we start with uh, by looking at um, a document, you know, a piece of paper or um, an electronic uh, document that every company, every organization needs to produce. That is an income statement. An income statement starts with whatever the organization sells. And it ends with whatever the organization makes in profit. Hopefully, it doesn't lose. That is a possibility. Um, everything in between, everything in between that so-called top line, your sales, and that so-called bottom line, your net income, which will be a profit or a loss, everything in between, that is your job as a manager. That is you working day after day, making decisions all day long, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. So we start with um, a simple look at the top of that income statement. That's sales, also called revenues, sales. You know, any uh, company, any business has to start by selling something. Yeah. Um, selling something is not easy. That's why we also have courses in marketing. That's why we have courses in um, business communication. Those things help you sell more, help you sell better and faster. But that is the top line. You know, we start with sales. We start with sales. What are we selling? How much are we selling? Are our sales growing? Yeah. How big are our sales? Uh, what exactly are we selling? Yeah, we, everything starts with sales. You have a business, you sell something. Yeah. So, and at the bottom of the same document, income statement, at the bottom of the same document, you find the so-called net income, profit or loss. That is what you have gained profit or lost loss after deducting a whole bunch of costs from your sales. That is the scary word in between your sales and your profit or loss is something called something Let's uh, be honest, C-O-S-T, cost, cost. Yes, yes, dear friends. Yeah. Your job as a manager will be to manage costs. Yeah. Um, let's make it very simple. You know, when you sell something, you will have costs either because you have to produce the things you sell or you will have to buy them from someone else to resell them. Yeah. When you sell something, you will have to market your products. Marketing costs money. You may have to manufacture your product. Manufacturing costs money. You will need lots of resources. You will need people. You will need equipment. You will need raw materials. You will need supplies. You will need components, ingredients, 
whatever. When you sell stuff, you will have costs. As a manager, you will spend your days making decisions, making decisions to sell more, to sell better products, to sell better products faster in larger quantities. However, every one of those decisions will carry a cost. Once again, every one of those decisions will carry a cost. Whenever you make a decision in business, you will have a cost. So, in other words, what we do in accounting is help you become a better, more effective, and more efficient manager by helping you think about your decisions by helping you see how your decisions involve money, involve costs. So we look, uh, we look at such questions as, you know, if my business sells more or less, how will my costs behave? Will my costs go up or down or will they stay the same? Uh, we think about such questions as if I look at a specific product or a specific team in my business, what are the costs of that product? What are the costs of that team? We think about um, costs and our decisions. If I make a decision, should I take this cost into account or can I just disregard it? Can I ignore that cost? Yeah. In other words, is that cost relevant? We also think about the different costs if you make stuff. Yeah, your materials, your labor, your overhead. Yeah. So I know it may sound a little um, complicated, a little intimidating, but in essence, please remember, it is very, very simple. You sell something, you sell something. Why? Because you are hoping to make a profit. Yeah, you sell something. You're going to make deals. Remember, we knew we should make deals. You're going to sell something. Why are you selling something? Because you want to make some money. You want to have some profit left at the end of the day or at the end of the period, the end of the year. Yeah. So in accounting, the only thing we do is not scary, is help you think, all right, how can I do a better job here? Yeah. Because at one point um, with your accountant, you will have to look at the numbers and ask yourself, how are we doing? How are we doing? Yeah, uh, that is a question you will also ask yourself in real life, especially during these COVID times. You will ask yourself regularly, how am I doing? In the business, the same question. How am I doing? How much are we selling? Are we making a profit or are we losing money? If we're making a profit, hey, good. Can we make more profit? Can we sell more? If we're losing, how can we make those losses disappear? Or how can we cut some costs? So accounting. As I said earlier, scary, scary, scary story. Don't worry. All we do in accounting is help you think about making better decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. And decisions, of course, 
are translated into numbers. And believe me, after a couple of weeks, you will love the numbers. You will, you will tell us, listen, from now on, I will study the numbers. I will look at the numbers, not with fear, not with dislike, but with joy, pleasure, enthusiasm. Thanks again. Thanks again for joining us. It's always a pleasure to see you in these um, sessions. Again, uh, feel free to contact us. Feel free to talk to one of our marketers. They are very lovely people. They will love to help you. We would love to see you in Canada. And of course, in the meantime, stay safe, remain calm, be kind. Thanks again and see you in Canada at VICCC GBE Global Business Expertise. My name is Luke. Thanks. Until the next time. Bye now.